Hello and welcome to this new episode of Free Science 365. Today's challenge is the world famous Monty Hall Challenge. As usual, first let's have a look at what we need for this challenge. So in terms of things we need to attempt this experiment, this is one of the simplest experiments ever. All you need is some post-it notes. So we have some post-it notes here and a few coasters or it can be actually anything. Uh, basically anything that you can hide the post-it notes behind. Uh, so I have chosen coasters. You can choose cardboards or you know playing cards, anything that you want. As long as they look similar, so because these three look similar, so as long as they look similar, uh, that's all you want. Now what I have done with the post-it notes is, I've chosen six of them, and on the right you can see it says door A, door B, and door C. So each of the coasters will actually depict one of these doors, and behind each coaster you will have a winning prize. Now we have three prizes here. The first one as it says here is plastic coin. The second one is also a plastic coin and the third one is a gold coin. A real gold coin. So first let me explain you what I will do. So what I'll do is I'll take for example this coaster and let's say I stick it says gold coin. I hope it can capture. Sometimes there's a focusing problem yes it says gold coin and I will just stick it here okay so then the second one I'll stick the plastic coin here it goes here and the third one again it says plastic coin worthless no value and so I will stick it here now the thing is nobody needs a plastic coin so you have three and I'll take them away so that you can't identify which coin uh, which coin lies with which coaster or which door in this case now nobody likes a plastic coin when you have a gold coin to win so the idea is you have to try to find the door or the coaster with the gold coin now so we have the three coasters with the prizes stuck uh, on the bottom of each. Now, we have to give a name. So let's name the first door, I don't know, you, I can, let's say, randomly, door B. So this door, this coaster is called door B from now on. Okay, this one, let's choose A. So this will be door A. And uh, the last one let's say it will be door C okay so here we have and let's just put them in that order so you have door A door B and door C all right so let's play the game so first you have to choose one of the doors okay so you can choose whatever door you want to choose let's imagine you chose door A you know what let me show you actually it's great that you didn't choose door B because behind door B it says mm, plastic coin worthless so now we know that door B is useless okay so let's keep it away from our main contenders okay so now we have two choices door A and C and the challenge or the question is would you stick with the original choice of A or would you switch over to door C that's the challenge so please talk with your friends or your children or students
actually Monty Hall challenge or Monty Hall problem is one of the most popular uh, mathematical problems in the world. It has come in movies, in TV programs. There are, you know, whole books written on it. Okay, let's discuss the solution now. So for those who chose to switch the doors, good job, fantastic, yes. Switching doors is the best strategy here. Okay, here's the explanation. So initially, the probability that door A or door B or door C has a gold coin is one third, right? So it's one by three. Let's see if it can stick. One by three and one by three. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's one in three chance that door A has a gold coin door B has a gold coin or gold, door C has a gold coin. Fantastic. Now, as I showed you last time, well, door B has a plastic coin. So, let's take the door B out of the equation. And now we are left with door A or door C. Most people would say now, well, the probability has changed now. So instead of one third uh, probability of door A and B and C, we have the gold coin. Some people would argue that actually the probability now, the new probability is 50-50, half and half, one by two, one by two, one in two chances of having a gold coin. But is it? Well, no, because probabilities don't change like this. So for those of you who chose that I would stick with door A, well, uh, this is the problem. The probability didn't change. You thought it changed, but actually the probability remains the original one. 1 by 3. 1 by 3 and 1 by 3. The probability doesn't change. Okay, well, but now we know for a fact that door B doesn't have a gold coin, it has a plastic coin. So the probability of door B having a gold coin is zero. So this probability, B's probability, will actually, where does it go? Well, that's something to think about, isn't it? So basically, this probability will transfer to, because you still have the same probability, you know, B and C. So, uh, door A still has a probability of 1 by 3 only. Now, that's the original choice you had, isn't it? But, door C now, because door B has zero probability now, so, in a way, you can, uh, you can say that B's probability actually transfers here. Combine B and C probability. Yes. Uh, goes there. So actually, the probability of C having the coin is one third and plus one third, double that of A. So the probability of C having a gold coin is actually two third. And that's the solution to this challenge, the Monty Hall problem. You have still only have one in three chances that door A has a gold coin, but the probability of door C having a gold coin is actually double that of door A, two third instead of one third, two times of one third. And that's why you should always switch the door. Okay, now. Let's see what's behind door C. I hope the focus doesn't change. Yes, gold coin. Yay! So, by deciding to switch after you know that door B has no gold coin behind it, 
it's actually a much better idea to change it in this case you want the gold coin and that's the basic explanation of the Monty Hall challenge and so that was the basic Monty Hall challenge now those of you who chose to switch congratulations and those of you who chose not to switch well apart from probability the reason why most people choose not to switch on there are some experiments done on real people and most people decide not to change not to switch over and the reason is not only probability because most people don't think in terms of probability in their everyday life to explain this let's uh, actually let's change the prices so now door a has actually a gold coin and door c now uh, has a plastic coin now let's imagine you decided to switch the doors you said you originally chose door a but then decided to change to door c and after changing to door c well it was revealed that you actually get nothing it's just a plastic coin you get now the sense of loss that you will have is very high you will imagine even though you you hadn't gotten the gold coin in your hands but by going for the original choice of door A and knowing that actually if I had stuck to my choice of door A I would have won the gold coin and now I have changed I switched over to door C uh, I, I win nothing the sense of loss is as, as if you actually lost something and that's the psychology and that's the reason why most people don't change the first choice they have <music> To deepen your understanding of the Monty Hall problem and how to maximize your chances of winning, let's extrapolate the Monty Hall problem. Instead of three doors, let's imagine there are 100 doors. And what I do is I ask you to choose, you know, any of the doors. And let's say, let's imagine you choose uh, door number, I don't know, let's say 57. Now what I do is I would actually open the uh, out of the 99 remaining doors I'll open 98 of them and leave one door unopened so you have door number 57 which was the original choice and then let's say door number 75 which I left unopened but I opened every other door and showed you there was a plastic coin behind each one of them now in this situation would you like to change the door? Would you like to switch the door? Or would you like to stay with your original choice? The answer is you should always change the door. The probability of you winning is actually much, much higher. It's not half and half. It's not one by two and one by two. It's actually by switching over the probability, all the probabilities of all the doors that have been opened will actually be transferred to the unopened door that you haven't chosen. So you increase the probability of you winning by a big, big margin. Now, let's imagine that instead of a hundred door, we have a thousand door, or let's say 10,000 doors. Now, out of the same situation, out of these 10,000 doors, you choose, let's say, door number, I don't know, 133. Okay, and let's say I opened out of 10,000 doors, I opened 9,998 doors and I left, let's say, the last door, the 10,000th door closed. Would you like to switch your choice or would you stay with door number 133? And the answer again is yes, you should always switch over. So your probability of winning increases many, many folds. And that was our video for today. Thank you for watching till the end and please subscribe, like and spread this video as much as possible. Please comment. I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye.